So you're thinking of moving to Weatherford, Texas. Well, in this video, we're going to be doing a map tour of the Weatherford area and the surrounding areas so you can get a better idea of where this place is, what this place is, and everything it has to offer. And if you stick around to the very end of the video, I'm going to show you guys a hidden gem that needs to be on your traveler's bucket list. Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Jack Lizenby, and together with Tom Jung, we are your local DFW real estate agents. We get calls every day from folks just like you looking to buy or sell. So whether you're a few days or a few months away from your move, go ahead and give us a call. We've got links down in the description so you can schedule a call or Zoom meeting at your leisure. And while you're down there, go ahead and leave a comment. Let us know why you're thinking about moving to Weatherford and where you're moving from. We'd love to hear about it. So before we get into it, a little bit of info about Weatherford itself. Weatherford is a sister city of the DFW. W Metroplex. It is on the western side of the Metroplex. It covers a just shy of 30 square miles and has about 33,000 people in it. And it's quickly becoming a very desirable location for people who still want all of the amenities that the city has to offer without being so cramped as to be inside the city center of, say, Dallas, Arlington, or Fort Worth, one of the big bigger cities in the DFW area. That being said, Weatherford is the horse cutting capital of the world. So if you're into ranching and and uh, the cowboy lifestyle, this is definitely gonna be the place that you wanna go check out. So where is Weatherford? So I actually have it pulled up here on the map if you guys wanna follow along with me. This is the city of Weather Weatherford. As you can see, you've got the city center here. You've got the lake over here, Lake Weatherford, uh, a very popular destination for a lot of the locals. We're gonna go ahead and zoom out a little bit. You can see the major roads going through here. Just keep an eye on those real quick because the 20 here is a major, uh, thoroughfare for the area and as we zoom out you see that Fort Worth is popping up here on our right the computer's being a little slow so bear with but uh, we've got Arlington Dallas Irving and all this stuff over here and Weatherford's just a hop skip and a jump to the west of all of that so zooming out a little bit further for people who may not be super familiar with the DFW area as we zoom out here you got Texas Dallas is over here on the northeastern portion so you're in a really good spot to get to things like Oklahoma City um, there's a Windstar right Right there off of the 35 at the border if you're into gambling Shreveport and all that over in Louisiana so honestly it's a really good spot for the interstate travel as well uh, just as D just DFW as a whole and uh, if we actually look at some of the drive times because I know they look close together on the map but Texas is a big place so we're gonna go ahead and zoom in a little bit on Weatherford itself and let's take a look here. So if you're in Weatherford the city center and say you wanted to get to Fort Worth, the next closest major city, uh, it's going to be, and let's see if I can guess this, it's going to be about half an hour, a little less than that, 20, 25 minutes. So it did land right at about 33 minutes. Uh, traffic right now is decently light, so I guess that's going to be a pretty typical travel time for you. Uh, if you're trying to make it to downtown Fort Worth, because that is the city center. If you don't need to make it all the way into Fort Worth, there's plenty of stuff to do here in the White Settlement area on the western side of Fort Worth as well. So now, let's say you wanted to go to Arlington. There's plenty of stuff to do there. You need to check out Arlington Live. we got videos on all those, so go ahead and check those out whenever you get an opportunity. But Arlington is going to run you a little bit more. Let's see if I can guess. 45 minutes? Yeah, 48 minutes. All right, cool. So that's a pretty typical drive time for Arlington, and that's about what the DFW airport's going to be as well, because as you can see here, it's up in the top right-hand corner of the screen at the moment. DFW International Airport from Fort Weatherford City Center is about 50-minute drive. Um, so if you do need to make some travels uh, <laughs> further than drive time will allow, you may need to look at alternative options if you travel off often, but if it's not something that's a huge deal for you, 50-minute uh, drive for a flight isn't anything terrible either so now let's say you wanted to go over to Dallas Dallas is gonna be a little over an hour yeah see an hour and two minutes from the Weatherford area so you're nice and far away from all the smog and noise of the city that light pollution you can actually go out and see the stars in Weatherford it's beautiful uh, but yeah if you do need to make it over to Dallas it's gonna be about an hour drive now um, one of the cool things about Weatherford, as you can see here on the right-hand side, we do have Lake Weatherford. Lake Weatherford is a nice recreational lake. I don't know a lot of the specs on it as if you can like build docks on it or if they allow watercraft over a certain size, but I do know that a lot of people go there for fishing and just partying and boating and stuff like that. Uh, so it is a good recreational lake as a whole and it has plenty of trails and things around it as well. Great nature. Um, like viewing area uh, but if you are in downtown Weatherford and you're trying to make it to Lake Weatherford let's see here maybe if I put lake in that search criteria 
Rutherford. Yeah, basically a hop, skip, and a jump. It's 15 minutes away if you're right in downtown Weatherford, and you got a couple of different options if, say, the main route is blocked off with traffic. So all in all, it's a very navigatable city. As you can see here, there's plenty of grid work here in the middle with the uh, the arterial roads because there are tons of um, tons of residents in Weatherford itself as well as around Weatherford. So you get plenty of options. Maybe you don't want to live in the city center. You can cut some of these drive times down by living outside of the main area, or maybe you do really want some of those shops and boutiques to be really close a walkable distance or something like that you do get options with that but we'll talk about that a little bit later in the video for now let's go over to our next section so now that you know where weatherford is i know you're asking well is this place for me and the answer is absolutely yes and i'm gonna show you why because weatherford like i said is a great mix of country and city put together so as you can see here it's a very well developed area with plenty of things to do whether you're inside the city limits or outside of the city limits and you don't have to go far for either of those so actually i want to show you a good example of that We've got over here on the eastern side of Weatherford, here it is, Hidden Acres Ranch Venue is what Google calls it, but Hidden Acres um, is a, it's a ranch obviously, but what they do is they cater specifically to like events, so you get all sorts of things going on at this place, it, it, they, I've seen them host just dinners, everything up to weddings, quinceaneras, whatever have you, but uh, here, let's take a look at some of the photos, because this place is really cool, so it obviously has that country aesthetic, it looks like they're actually like rearing horses and everything, thing here but it's it's also a very inviting place for people who may not necessarily have their mud kickers in the back of their truck um, but here as you can see so they've got like nice little table set up and everything and everything has this really cool like rustic almost farmhouse aesthetic going on from like from A to Z they've just really got um, that feel going so you see you got like the general storefront like facade thing going on here that old western feel uh, they've got like bar set up so you can you can host all kinds of events here and it really is beautiful and just keeps that weather for vibe going uh, but as we go up here as you can see while we're, while we're on this side of the metroplex actually Let's go a little bit north and check out Lake Weatherford. Like I said, it's a really cool place because Lake Weatherford itself is really inviting, but the people around it are really cool as well. So the um, the, the the lake itself, they understand it's a recreational lake. So no one's going to bite your head off if you're playing music and having a good time. I know some of these people go out there and do all sorts of things. There may or may not be some fireworks. I'm not going to rat anyone out, but it is a really fun time. But there's more than just the lake itself. So as you can see here, you've got the uh, floating bridge up here, which is really more of just like a, a, a viewpoint more than anything else but this right here is really cool so the trailhead they've got like a trail and you may be able to see it a little bit here I don't know if this is the actual trailhead itself but there's all kinds of trails that go along this green area around the lake so it's a really cool place if you just want to have like a relaxing stroll or ride your bike or something like that um, and then this right here the tavern on the lake is really cool as well because they have um, you can get to it by road obviously here as you can see West Lake tr uh, Drive you can just drive up to it but if you happen to already be on the lake and you're out in your boat or whatever you got your mastercraft out on the water and you just want to pull in they have their own little marina area over here where you can pull in and then just go straight to the restaurant which is really cool Oh, look, they have a disc golf disc golf course. I didn't know that. So if you're into disc golf, that's a really cool place as well. Um, but yeah, other than that, maybe you maybe you need something a little um, a little more west because you didn't want to be on the eastern side. You wanted to e be even further away from the DFW area. Well, guess what? We got we got something here on the western side of Weatherford as well. The uh, the rodeo grounds. Yeah, here it is. So. If you're coming to Weatherford, you got to be about rodeos. If you're coming to Texas, you got to be about rodeos. I mean, crap. They're, rodeos are big in other states, too. This is a crazy one they have in Las Vegas. or some in California. But here in Texas, there's something else. In Weatherford, they go all out. It may be a smaller venue, but these guys go hard. So they have all sorts of stuff here from, like, barrel racing to, like, bull riding and all that jazz. But uh, this way, you don't have to go all the way over to, like, the Dickies Arena compound to, to go see a rodeo. You've got something here local. And this one's really cool because you'll see a lot of younger guys doing it too. They have a lot of local rodeo events and whatnot, so it's not just the, the big state stuff either. Um, this is a great way for people to actually get into this kind of scene. It's a very welcoming and inviting crowd too. Um, but yeah, Weatherford's got a lot of stuff going on. And then in the city center, let's actually talk about some of that in the next section here because there's some fun stuff uh, as far as the shopping and whatnot goes. But this right here, if you need a little bit of uh, the outdoors, but you don't want to go all the way out to like a rodeo or anything like that, we do have Weatherford Heritage Park, which is this really nice and well-kept park. It's it's a nice quiet area to just go out, 
read a book, have a picnic or something like that with the family, let the kids run around. And like you could see some of these photos here. It's really beautiful. Um, they've got like these nice extra wide trails. I see people taking bikes, roller skates and everything up and down these as well. So if you don't want to walk and you want something with wheels, it's a great place as well. Oh yeah, it's also a great place to watch the fireworks during the 4th of July. I got to see that one year. Got bit up by mosquitoes. But, you know, speaking of the great outdoors, let's take a step away from the great outdoors and take a look at some of these shops in the next section here. So now that you know where all the fun stuff is, let's take a look at some of the uh, supplies end of things. So I know that you're a little bit further removed from the main part of the Metroplex being out in Weatherford so having a good close reliable reliable place where you can actually get the goods and things that you need is going to be really important and as you can see here even even this far zoomed out on Weatherford you can already see a couple of things so HEB for anyone who may not be a Texas Texas uh, a well-read Texas native uh, is a very large chain of supermarkets that we have out here um, it's 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 a very Texan thing, but on top of that, like the 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 pride that goes into HEB is very well felt in the venue. It's not like walking into a Walmart where everything feels dirty and like people are just there because it's a job. Like the people at HEB are like proud to be working there. They're proud to be part of their local community and whatnot. So it is a really cool place to go if you do uh, find yourself in, in the Weatherford area. Uh, but as you can see here, we got all sorts of stuff. You got like a storage unit up here a little bit further away. We got some food venues and whatnot, but let's go a little bit closer to the city center here. Um, I just saw it actually down towards the, bo the bottom right here. As you get closer to the I-20, you do have some of those um, bigger box stores. So I saw an academy up here before it disappeared. Uh, where'd you go, buddy? Anyway. Yeah, so there's like an academy in this area. I don't, there it is. You got like a Home Depot. There was a Hobby Lobby that popped up right here. A Walmart, I'm, you know, I was just throwing shade at them, but there they are. <laughs> you got a discount tire. All the stuff you're gonna need is gonna be around this intersection here. If you're trying to be close to the highway, this is a great spot to be because you have the main road that goes through Weatherford here, north south, connecting with the I-20 here, which is a great way to get to basically anywhere in the Metroplex or even, even in Texas, honestly, from this point. Um, is a good spot. You got Lowe's, a Kroger, I think that was over there, a Target. Yeah, Kohl's, sorry. Kohl's and Target. Um, plenty of stuff up down here. But on top of that, another thing, if maybe you're just looking for some casual shopping, you don't want to you don't want to just deal with groceries all the time. That's not always fun. Food's great, but sometimes you need to get out and enjoy yourself. Well, this right here, actually, in the Weatherford City Center, I kind of like how they did, did this. It's very aesthetic. This is, I believe, a tax building. Yeah, the Parker County Courthouse. Sorry, not a tax building. So whenever you go into Weatherford, the city center, the Old Town Weatherford at the center of Weatherford is, as you can see here, you've got the two main roads that come in, north, south, east, and west, and they have this circle drive here that goes around the courthouse. And it's really cool because there's this nice historical building. I'm going to take a bit of a sidetrack here so we can take a look at this. There's a nice photo. Uh, credit to whoever got this. That's that's really cool. But this is the uh, the courthouse here itself, and as you can see here, city or the uh, the circle drive goes around it. You got the north south uh, road here, and then you got the east west road here, and all around this, you can kind of see here in the background, you got these nice boutique shops. Um, these. These have been pretty uh, pretty consistent, honestly, with considering the area, you'd think they'd be very come and go, but a lot of them, uh, they've been there for quite a while here. Let me pull up some of them. So you've got like, see here, you got the candy store and whatnot, you've got like pet supplies, but they're these nice cute little uh, boutique shops and whatnot, antiques, that one's interesting, I haven't seen that one before, tobacco and whatnot. Uh, but you got like a little bank here as well. It's just a really cool area. So it's got almost like an old town vibe and everything. And the architecture really reflects that because it's, uh, I want to say it was like late 18th, 1800s, early 1900s. A lot of these buildings ended up getting built and they've done a really good job of maintaining them. They've like done all the repairs. They painted the brick, kept the windows from getting broken, all this other stuff. So everything still looks nice, but it has like that last century architectural feel to it. That really just makes that, that. Texas ranchy country ness pop in the uh, the city center here. Oh, look, you got all sorts of stuff, chefs and whatnot. So like the city center itself is a really good spot to go for like a lot of your your shopping and outings and stuff like that. And if nothing else, walk around, go go take in the sights and the feel of Weatherford itself. That is a really nice spot to be. But let's go ahead and talk about some of the food options because I know the foodies out there are gonna love this next section. All right, now that I've whetted your appetite for Weatherford itself, let's talk about some of the actual food options because that's something I'm a big fan of if you can't already tell, but uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> so if we zoom in here on Weatherford, one of the things that I do want to point out here, you got the malt shop over here, which is cool, but this one right here, the Mesquite Pit. So if you don't know much about Texas cuisine, a couple of the biggest things that we have down here are going to be barbecue and Mexican food, and we do great at both via both Tex-Mex and actual Mexican food, uh, but barbecue is where we really shine here, and Weatherford's no different, so the Mesquite Pit is a really cool one. I want to show you some of this stuff just because, you know, it, it, you're, you're not going to take my word for it. I want you to see some of the actual food items they have. They've got really good barbecue here, you know, loaded baked potatoes, ribs, all that jazz, and it's actually not too, too far here, as you can see from, like, the downtown area, so it's right here off of the main road, so you're not too far from, like, uh, if you're over here on like Hudson Ar Oaks or whatever, you don't have to go all the way into the city to get it. Uh, but they've got a lot of great options. So it's a very laid back place and it's very moderately priced as well. But as we actually get closer to the city center itself, um, my mouth is watering just thinking about all, all of it. Sorry. We pointed this out a little bit earlier in one of the earlier sections, but Shep's is a, a really good one as well. Uh, this is more like, uh, you know, sit down eat restaurant you can see here they got the little plat the paper trays and whatnot so i wouldn't necessarily call it like a date spot or whatever but if you want like good sandwiches this is the place to be they got like these grilled sandwiches and everything you see here they've got like the whole bar set up and whatnot it's a really cool place to hang out as well I'll get a good picture of the interior here oh this one's a 360 heck yeah let's uh spin around oh there you go they got the arcade machines and everything set up there along the wall it's just a very like uh local like a hangout area but the food here is actually really good as well and then uh and that's not too too far from the downtown square as you can see here you got chefs there and right there and then speaking of the square this is another great one Zeno's on the square it's a uh, an italian joint that they got here uh but they serve obviously a little bit more than just like your typical italian um, but this one's really good because it's hard to find good Italian food in Texas, believe it or not, you know, <laughs> we're better at barbecue than we are at pasta, but this place actually has a pretty good setup. So very, the vodka sauce is great. Go check it out if you get a chance. It's a pink sauce. But uh, the food there is really good as well. They got like nochi and whatnot. So some more, more, um, less or less mainstream stuff as well than just your pastas. And there's one more. Oh, yesterday's sandwich shop is really good as well. Another great sandwich spot. Um, but if you're looking for somewhere where you can get some really good authentic Mexican food and it's more um, higher end than just a sandwich shop, let's see if I can find it down here. There's a little place, and I want to show it to you before I pronounce it, because a lot of people... That's not it. Where's it at? There it is. So, this right here, Awaxica. It's pronounced Oaxaca, by the way. No, no offense to anyone who says it wrong, but you're saying it wrong. Uh, this Mexican... Uh, food place right here. It's Mexican cuisine, but they, and I know that may be a bit of a turnoff for some of the local Texans where you're like, oh yeah, Mexican cuisine. That's not real actual Mexican food, but these guys have like some legit ones here. So you could see like the food is great, um, but they've got like some, they've got your, you know, your, your chicken chimichangas and all that jazz. So no worries. They've got like the mainstream stuff, but they've got some really cool ones like your mole and whatnot as well. So some much more traditional options and they do a really good job. So, oh yeah, here you go photo of the inside they got this really cool bar set up and everything here it's a nice spot and on top of that it lets you explore some of the less mainstream options when it comes to mexican cuisine so if you're looking for a place to really impress your date this would be a great place to take them so now that you know where it is now that you know what there is to do and what there is to eat and see I know you're thinking, well, is it a good spot for families? Well, yeah, actually, Weatherford's a great spot for families because we got, um, there's all kinds of really decent schools in Weatherford as well. So I know Fort Worth kind of gets a bad rep for its school system because, you know, public schools are what they are. But uh, Weatherford's trying to pull away from the pack, and I think they're doing a really good job. So what I did here, I'm going to go ahead. I can't give you personal opinions about a lot of these schools just because that's the way it is. So what I'm going to do instead is show you what Niche.com has to say about it. So Niche or Niche.com, however you want to say it, is a school rating system based on the certain criteria. You got academics, teachers, clubs, activities, administration, college prep, diversity, and uh, sports and resources sources and food. So right here, I've pulled up Weatherford ISD. So Weatherford itself does actually have its own independent school district, and it's rated B plus on niche.com or niche.com. And uh, I don't want that to scare you away just yet. So hold on, listen for a second. So you can see here it's B plus, which is honestly for Texas, that's pretty par. Um, you're going to see a lot of the stuff in Texas floats around like the B plus to A range. And this is decent. B plus is decent. So as you can see here, you got good grades and academic, academic 
academia, diversity, the teachers, and college prep are all decent. Where it suffers is clubs and activities, resources and facilities, administration and food. And a lot of this, this comes down to the fact that Weatherford is a smaller city. So the vast majority of people are moving to the bigger cities like Dallas, uh, Fort Worth, Arlington, and stuff like that. So they receive a lot more funding from their taxpayers, whereas Weatherford being a smaller city and having a reasonable tax rate doesn't. So you're going to see that it's going to have fewer or uh, less in the way of extracurricular activities like band or certain sports. If you have like a really niche uh, hobby or something like that, this may not be the place for you and your kids, but it um, overall, like you're not going to have any trouble with your kids' education as is. Like as far as the academic portion of your education, your kids are going to be okay. Uh, let's take actually a look. If we scroll down here a little bit further, uh, you got the map here. Actually, let's take another quick look at this before we get too much further. As you can see here, they got schools all over the city itself of Weatherford. Uh, there's a couple here up north. You got like an elementary school, the middle school here. Let's see, the high school should be down around this area if I'm not mistaken. Um, oh, maybe not. Where'd you go? Weatherford High School. So it's sorry, it's right here off the south end of off the twenty. So Weatherford High School is the only high school in Weatherford itself that is a public school. So you've got like as you saw earlier, some of the middle schools and I think an elementary school. Yeah, Curtis Elementary right there. All of these around the B B plus range, and that's pretty typical. But uh, the, the schools themselves. What I'm trying to point out with this is the schools themselves are going to be closer to the city center. So even if you do end up living up like up in here in some of these more rural areas, you can take these these farm to market roads to get there pretty quickly so don't let the the drive times deceive you if you're like say somewhere way up here in like north weatherford or something because you can still get to them very quickly uh, even though they are closer to the city center. But if we go down here, here's some of the, the top rated ones. So we've got like, see, Martin Elementary, Austin Elementary. Well, let's pull up Curtis too, since it oops, since it made the B plus mark. And then here, Hall Middle School, and then Weatherford High School. We'll go ahead and open these up so you guys can take a look. But uh, here, so you got the breakdown again. As you can see, academics and teachers, A minus, it's still really well. Diversity is a little low, but as you get further away from the city, that's gonna end, that's gonna happen, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, again, it it probably got a lower rating because of the fact that it doesn't have a lot in the way of extracurriculars. It didn't even make a rating for some of those. Um, and you're going to see that that trend through a lot of these. Like I said, see again, Austin Elementary, same deal. And then teachers, ooh, looks like Curtis took a bit of a heat, hit with the teachers there. But, you know, doing good on diversity and academia. And then the middle school here, yeah, again, see... It's it's going to be a lot of the same. So this is this is this looks pretty typical as you can see here for a lot of the schools. Yeah, again, see clubs and activities took a hit for Weatherford High School as well. Um, so if if that's something that's really important to you, you may need to look into like a recreational league or something like that if you're looking for a specific sport or maybe private tutoring for uh, for like choir or band or something like that because the the schools themselves just don't honestly just don't receive the funding that they need for a lot of these extracurricular activities but as far as like your your uh, kids college prep and everything like the academic portion of it they're going to be perfectly set in the weatherford school district so nothing to worry about there but let's go ahead and jump into our next section real quick so i finally convinced you and you're thinking about moving to weatherford and you're thinking man but what are the houses like i don't want to be stuck somewhere i don't love living but don't worry we got you covered so i've still got weatherford up here on the map but instead of being here on google maps we're going to go ahead and click open on this tab the matrix tab we're going into the matrix people uh, no, this is the MLS, uh, the multiple listing system. This is what most real estate agents use in the state of Texas and especially around here. Um, but all it is is just all the real estate listings. But what I'm going to do is go ahead. I've already got Weatherford here on the map. And you can see each of these little green dots is an active listing for sale. And the black ones are coming soon. But uh, the, basically the same deal. This, are, this is everything that's on the market for sale at the moment in Weatherford. Um, and I know that it looks a little sparse at the moment, but let's go ahead and zoom in on one of these. I had one that I picked out earlier that looked really good. So if you want some city living, oh, here we go. This is a nice one. We're going to go ahead and take a look at some of the options. So this is pretty typical of Weatherford uh, proper, like the architectural style. As you can see here, you've got like the natural stone water line and some of the painted brick. But you get like some of these almost Spanish-esque uh accents on like a typical farmhouse style 
uh, property here. So let's go ahead, click through some of these. You can see a lot of these properties are going to come with land. This one I think was just shy of six hundred thousand uh, dollars. A typical house in Weatherford is going to be a little bit cheaper than say in like Fort Worth or Dallas. You're looking somewhere to the three to four range, usually upper mid fours uh, and like upper threes. But uh, it's gonna like that's a, that's a pretty median price point. You can find some cheaper. I've seen some in the two hundred fifty thousand dollar range, but it really just depends on what you're looking for. So as you can see, you got plenty. You get plenty of land with most of the things that you get out in Weatherford, because I know that's a big draw for people. This one, ooh, they put this one on top of a hill and everything. Nice swing garage and whatnot. Okay, here we go. So you can actually see this is becoming really popular, not just in Weatherford, but in the DFW area as a whole. You get these nice tall iron doors, these cool like dark accents and everything like that. Not too dark. It's like a, a mid gray, but it's like a soft gray. It's nothing like depressing or anything like that. They got like the office with the, the fireplace and everything. Just really pretty. And I love the way they actually have it staged. So this is becoming really popular as well. You get like your dedicated range hood and everything. And um, we'll, we'll probably see a little bit closer as well but you can see they got like the farmhouse accent the nice wood textured tile and everything dedicated pantry there in the corner let's see if we can see the setup you may not be able to see it but that looks like it's it's a um, a cooktop instead of a uh, a slide in oven and everything they got like the stacked oven over there this is a pretty typical setup i love the the little farmhouse chandelier they got going on there um very nice setup indeed Oh, here's another one, the trade ceilings. So these are really popular as well. Looks like that's the other side of the fireplace there. Come on, show me a better angle. Oh, electric cooktop, ew. Get something with gas. No, it's it's lovely. I know some people prefer electric. I'm just a gas guy myself. Uh, see, you get like these nice decorative trade ceilings, the crown molding and everything with the inset. A lot of times these decorative beams will be like wood textured and everything, and that's becoming really popular. As well as this right here, these big sliding glass windows. I love these. You get tons of natural lighting and these big, you can open up, some of these open up like all the way. So you can basically have this giant porthole between your covered patio, which they definitely have a setup here, and your, your living area. So if you're hosting or if you just want to like open up your house more to the, the outside outdoor elements we do get some beautiful times of year here in texas i know it's like nine months of sweltering and like two months of winter but those those uh two weeks of spring and autumn that we get are great <laughs> um and it's nice to have something like that as well Oh man, yeah, this one's just really pretty. I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted by this one. Let's go check out another one real quick. So this is what, like, this is this is a really nice one in the city. You can see it's on a bit of a larger lot. Most of them are going to be closer to, like, a quarter acre. Um, so a little bit of land for the kids to run around in the backyard, but nothing crazy. But if you want some real property, let's go ahead and go up north here. There's a, there's a not nice, beautiful little community. Let's see if I can find it real quick. I think it's in this area. Um... Let's see, actually, yeah, there it is. So this this area right here is a really cool community. I've shown a, I've shown a couple houses in this area. Let me pull this one up real quick. So if you want something a little bit further away from the city, so you see we got we got that right there. Let's keep an eye on that marker right there off of the, what is that, 1885 and the 920. So you got Peaster up there, and you got Weatherford down there, and you're around in this area. So you're still right off of the main road. That's like maybe a 15, 20 minute drive into Weatherford, like a 10, 15 minute drive into Peaster. But you're far enough away that like there's nothing out here. It's nice. It's nice and quiet. You want some land in a nice house. This is like the area you want to be. But let's go ahead take a look at this one real quick. See what they got set up, because a lot of the neighborhood or a lot of the houses in this neighborhood are going to be a lot like this one. As you can see, they did a um, they did like the the stone brick facade here the red brick with the white grout and everything i mean it all just really pops maybe the facade's not really your um your style or anything oh and this right here i want to point this out you see this thing in the the photo right here that's a that's a cap for a well pump so i will say a lot of the stuff as you get further away from the city is going to be on well and septic and that may be a bit of a scare for some people who haven't dealt with country living before but it's nothing really too concerning as long as you're in you're smart about it it's not something that you're really gonna have to deal with all that often it's more about just take care of it like you would anything else in a house and it's really cool because that means you don't have to pay sewage water fees you don't have to pay water servicing fees you only use or you only pay for the electricity you use to process your um, the water that you drink and use from the well pump itself and then you may need to pay somebody to come out and empty a septic tank once every I don't know, a couple of years, depending on how big your tank is. 
Um, as long as you, like I said, as long as you take care of your stuff, this is a great way to save money because water is expensive. Uh, if you have kids, you know. Anyway, sorry. So going on, uh, checking out this house, the architectural styles, oh, lo lovely covered patio and everything. Interesting they put that up at the front, but it is a really nice feature. And that's pretty typical of the houses out here as well is a lot of them have outdoor uh, entertainment setups like you can see over here, it may be a little difficult to see, but that little white spot there's more than likely an outlet for like a TV. Um, they'll have outdoor fireplaces and things like that, so you can host people. And this one, it has a fan and some lighting and everything, so even as it gets darker or warmer or something like that, you've got a nice little setup uh, and can still be sheltered from the elements. Three car garage is pretty typical in this neighborhood as well, because these are larger houses and larger lots. This one's a swing drive, so as you can see here, that's the front of the house over there. This is like the left side of the house as you're looking at it. Swing drive, they got that wrought iron fence with the uh, chain link fill there. Um, oh, nice arched uh, high entryway ceiling and everything. Hardwood floors. Uh, that's a, I don't know why they took that photo in vertical. That looks ugly. Uh, the house itself looks lovely. Let me see if I can find one some better photos because these houses really are nice. I'm just not doing it justice with those cell phone photos. Here we go. Did you do professional photos? All right, so this one has like, oh, actually, I've seen this house. This one's lovely. So you got like the natural stone brick here, the, the wood siding and everything. Uh, this one's right on the entryway. I'm surprised this one hasn't sold, but it is lovely. So yeah, you walk in, you see, again, the vaulted ceiling. You got the decorative beams, the open concept and everything. There's like a, this is a formal dining area over here that they put a foosball table in. Uh... Just really nice, and everything has like that farmhouse aesthetic as well, but it's not like so farmhousey where it's like Paula Deen farmhouse. This is more like, you know, just like a, a hint of farmhouse. So we don't scare away all the non-Texas natives who, who may not be used to this much wood and iron. Um, but yeah, you get these nice granite, granite countertops, this decorative range hood with the cool like decorative tiling back there on the backsplash. Oh, the butcher block, uh, you know, island and whatnot and then obviously these aren't going to be in every house out here but this is like the style that you're going to get whenever you come out to this area and on top of that oh the mud bench and everything that looks lovely let me see if i can get a photo of the backyard they got a really well the stand-up tub and everything not to you know show showcase these guys listing too too much but let me click through here you guys can kind of glance at these as i'm clicking through but i want to show you guys what the real draw for um an area like this is there we go so this like this is the kind of stuff i'm talking about so they've got like a, a whole fire pit set up and like a grill and everything but like the land is what you go out over your way to do in this area so like the reason you're so far away from the city is because you want to be away from people you want to be away from traffic you want to be away from noise pollution and all that jazz all the stuff that makes it you know the ugh part of the city but these guys they got it figured out because it look you saw all these photos they got all these amenities and stuff like that it's at a reasonable price point and everything but you're still far away from the city and not so far away that you need to go in and see look at that that's beautiful imagine having that in the back of your yard kids could go run around and get tired before they even make it to the fence line like it's great and they get plenty of front yard space too and that's the real draw whenever you live in out in these areas but one thing i do want to show you guys real quick before we move on because i know i'm talking your ear off land's great all that jazz this is one little neighborhood over here that i think is really cool let me see if i can find it it's called hudson oaks and if you if you know what that is you're already like oh yeah of course hudson oaks let me see if i can find it here on the map i don't think i've ever had to find it here on the map uh, there it is so hudson oaks or more appropriately right across the street from hudson oaks is this area see that one's a little pricier but as you can see here we got the parker county airport and this isn't it's like a semi-public airport but the cool thing about this is they actually have some houses uh here let me see if i can show it to you real quick uh, I don't think there's any that are listed right now, but as you can see here on this, uh, actually, let me pull this up on Google Map. So right here, let's go to satellite view. Take, check this out. As you can see here, we got a flight line right here. So a runway for the, uh, you know, the uninitiated, a flight line right there. And you got all these hangers here, but the cool part is that's the taxiway right here. And what are these? Let's zoom in on that and take a look. We got a couple more hangers. Is that somebody's house? You bet your butt it is, because look at that. We got a neighborhood that backs right up to this airport. And this thing, this thing's cool, so I, I call it Hudson Oaks. I don't actually remember the name of the neighborhood itself, but like as you could see up there, they had the little 
Hudson Oaks moniker. Yeah, there it is. Hudson Oaks moniker there. But this neighborhood right uh, right here, the, uh, the HOA actually helps take take care of and manage the flight line here so these people they a lot of them own planes or are uh flying aficionados and uh hobbyists and things like that uh, personal pilots they, a lot of them have if not all of them have their ppl in this area it's great so we've got a couple clients that have been looking to move to this area the availability is really difficult to get in as far as like the neighborhood itself there's another one that we're looking at as well but there's a couple other options if this one doesn't work out for you and you do have a ppl and this is something that you're looking for let us know we got other options because like i said this one's a little difficult to get into but it looks like they have a couple of listings here on the other side of the neighborhood not up against the flight line let's take a look at some of these real quick so yeah like these houses are going to be nicer as well the price point's a little higher since you are in like a more exclusive neighborhood this is more of a niche case scenario so as you can see that number went up a little bit this is where the pricing is this is the current list price right now it's like six hundred sixty thousand dollars at the moment but again you still get a really nice house you're still really close to the city and the main highway and everything so you can get around very easily and you got you got an airport in your in your freaking neighborhood man like that's nice oh a bit of an interesting choice there with the tile but i like the rest of the stuff here all these nice accents they got going on the little i don't even know what you call those, those half circle windows there moon windows or whatever oh the trade ceiling that's lovely um or i'm sorry the vaulted ceiling there with the crown molding and everything you got your little breakfast nook and semi open floor plan with the kitchen there the natural stone brick on the fireplace everything's really flowing together with this one good for these guys i like that like that a lot but anyway so like not to toot these guys horn too much for them but like you can still get some beautiful houses and a lot of city amenities even that far out away from the city center this one's not that far but you saw the last neighborhood there's plenty of options here weatherford is a beautiful place and this is why so many people are moving here because there's there's plenty of cowboys still in texas that like a little bit of the city living as well and i don't blame them uh, so if you are looking for a good house, this is a phenomenal spot to do it and not be too far away from the country or the city. All right, guys, I'm glad you stuck around to the end of the video. Maybe you just like hearing me talk, but maybe you actually did want to see what the hidden gem was. But don't worry, I won't keep you waiting any longer. We've seen it on the map a few times at this point, um, and I just haven't pointed it out as much as I wanted to. But it is a really cool spot. Um, this... This one seems a little obvious for some people. I'm sure if you're in Weatherford and you were looking for like a hidden, hidden gem, I'm sorry, I don't have anything like that for you guys. But as far as like hidden gems go, for people who may not be familiar with Weatherford, this place right here, Chandler Garden, is a, uh, it's like a botanical garden slash like almost, it's, it's, it's got like a lot of architectural pieces in it as well, but it is really lovely. So uh, they've got like, as you can see here, they've got like all these little water, uh, features and things like that. They grow all sorts of native and non-native plants, but it's a beautiful spot to take the family for a stroll or maybe just to go relax or something like that. An early morning stroll through this place is lovely, honestly. And they keep a they keep and maintain this place really well. As you can see, they I think they do venues here or they they have a uh, venue services here as well. I've seen some people do like, you know, weddings and things like that, but you have to to schedule stuff like that out in advance. Uh, these cool little archways and everything like that like see they've they've really just done it up beautifully and this isn't just a weatherford thing like this is even if you're not just moving to weatherford like if you're here in the area i would say this is definitely worth going out of your way to go check out uh because honestly they've done a phenomenal job keeping and maintaining this and it's right here in the city that's another thing i know i talk about like you know getting out and away from the city but if you are in the weatherford area and you just maybe 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 you just didn't want to go all the way out there and you are in the city but this is a, a lovely place to be in this area here around the garden area and you can just swing by and check it out it's like a five minute drive from a lot of the places in the city so if you are in the area like look at that five dollars to get in you probably got five dollars sitting in your couch cushion somewhere like go go check this place out people um but yeah so like th this is the kind of stuff that weatherford is known for it's not big it's not huge or flashy but these people love like who they are where they are and like they're they're all headed towards like a great place like weatherford is like they love themselves in a good way like they're they they love them the the people the community the food and everything like that as you can see from everything that i've shown you here it's like all all the stuff that really makes it pop is the care that they put into the community and this is 
no different from that. So if you're looking for like the culmination of all that, that effort that these people put into their local community, I highly suggest you go check out Chandler Gardens because it's the place to be for that. All right, guys. Well, that's all I have for you today. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Go ahead, leave a like or dislike, leave a comment, go ahead, hit the bell, subscribe, do all that stuff, man. Just interact with the video because you know what? It helps out us. It helps out the channel and it lets us know what you guys are interested in. We don't get a lot of feedback from you guys outside of the comments. So go ahead, jump down there. Tell us what you think. All right. Give a, if you're a Weatherford local, I'd love to hear what you guys think of not just the video, but like Weatherford itself, because the reason we make these videos is to help people who are coming in from out of state, coming in from out of city, coming in from out of the country to, to come live in this area. And the more they know about it, the better they can integrate and be great neighbors they can go and do all the fun things that you, you guys get to do every day so please if you have something that you'd love to share that i missed put it in the comments by all means we do read those i promise um but other than that remember if you're looking to buy or sell keep calm and call tom